So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so we're just waiting for everybody who's joining. We're just waiting a few minutes um, until four o'clock and then we'll kick off. Okay, I think I'll start with my part anyway, and then uh, Nicholas can uh, do his bit once we get a few more attendees running. So um, everybody, so welcome to this um, final webinar for TLA Robotics in um, 2021. This time we're going to talk about uh, best of Spanish robotics, and we have um, eight or seven um, awesome Spanish robotics companies uh, presenting today, and we'll get to them um, as soon as possible. I'll just tell you really quickly about TLA Robotics and what we do here. So TLA Robotics is uh, focused exclusively on the European robotics sector. Uh, our main activity is webinars. We're a fully voluntary group, and we have three aims as a uh, voluntary group, which is uh, to encourage more investment, into European robotics companies to promote increased uptake of robotics and automation and to improve the gender balance in the sector as well. Um, so note that TLA Robotics is part of a larger group called TLA, so Tech London Advocates, which is a large and growing voluntary nonprofit uh, group for technology professionals. It's free to join. Um, and if you take a um, screenshot, uh, you can have the email address there. There are currently about 15,000 advocates or members. Um, there are more than 20 different working groups from 5G to retail technology and TLA Robotics is one of those. Um, yeah, you also have quite a lot of different, there's probably a, a TLA Spain uh, uh, group as well at the moment. So anyway, so the way that these uh, webinars work is that each company will be given five minutes to present their company and products and after all the presentations, we will respond to a few questions. Um, so with that, I will hand over to Nicholas, who um, kindly have uh, sponsored the event by our uh, FIVS group. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicolas Ilne. I work for FIV group in, uh, in FIV uh, Smart Automation Solutions. And you should see my screen in a minute. And uh, yes, we are indeed uh, the proud sponsor of today's event. Uh, FIV, uh, FIV Group is a technology company. We do uh, high-tech uh, systems, automation systems. So that's why we're very excited to see all the, the fine uh, robotics and technology we're going to see today. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes to give you a quick presentation about what we do. So FIV is a global group working with uh, industrial companies doing um, fully integrated solutions for great many uh, different industries that we'll see in a minute. Um, we are a global play a player with um, local presence. And of course, on today's topic, we also have uh, a Spanish uh, subsidiary uh, where we do systems, uh, integrated systems for logistics in, uh, in the food industry, in distribution, uh, etc. Because as you, as you can see, <clears throat> we are present in, um, in different parts of the world. We have around uh, 1,600 employees uh, in, uh, in 11 subsidiaries, a bunch of regional offices uh, everywhere, in the, including in the UK. And uh, yes, again, we are very much a technology company. We spend a great deal in, uh, in R&D, developing things in robotics, uh, developing things in software, in uh, artificial uh, intelligence. Um, and uh, we'll show you this in a moment. So in smart automation solutions, we work with uh, um, a lot of different actors, a lot of different industries. 
Um, we could fairly split them into two groups. Um, one of them is uh, industrial companies. So food production, pharma, beauty, uh, beverage, aut automotive, etc. Um, and the other part would be the pure uh, logistics player, such as <clears throat> distribution, e-commerce, uh, postal, uh, 3PL, etc. Here you see a, a quick panel of the, the type of uh, people we work with. Um, we like to, to work in, uh, in very involved partnerships. So we have uh, long lasting uh, customers. We, we work over the years. Um, we've built thousands of systems uh, around the world in, uh, again, in retail and courier and postal and uh, other distribution. And in those systems, we provide full turnkey solutions with proprietary uh, technology. So all the different places you've seen on the map around the world, uh, each built part of the system. So we have automated storage, we have uh, material angling equipment, conveyors, etc. IT systems, we do uh, WCS, WMS uh, software, robotics, of course, today's topic. Uh, and we also do sorting systems. So we have a, um, a great toolbox with a lot of different technologies we can pick from and put together to give you your turnkey solution. Now, what's about robotics, you might say, which is today's topic? On robotics, um, we specialize on uh, uh, palletizing and depalletizing applications. So everything that will go uh, on or off a pallet or a roll cage or, or, or dolly maybe. <clears throat> so we handle things like stacks, uh, layers, uh, carton boxes, trays, totes, et cetera, et cetera, you name it. Um, and specifically, we deal with um, complexity in doing things like multi-format palletizing. So where every single box is different from one another, we have to compute ways of putting them together. We have to manipulate those different things. We also um, develop a lot of things right now in, uh, in 3D vision to analyze the environment of the robot, to uh, deal with unexpected items, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, is uh, we also have a long history with um, with robotics and uh, robotic um, applications. So um, that will be it for me. Um, if you have any requests or need any information on intro logistics uh, automation, turnkey systems, please reach out. We we're, we're here for you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks for that, uh, Nicholas. And uh, just for our attendees, just remember to that this will be available on YouTube as well after um, after the um, webinar has been held. But uh, don't forget to you can also take uh, screenshots so you capture some uh, email addresses that you're interested in and so on. Uh, with that, we'll hand over to um, Anne from Cyber Surgery. Okay, so I am Anne Fernandez from Cyber Surgery. Uh, I'm the clinical product specialist from, from the company. And I am gonna show you today our robotic assistant for, for spine surgery. So this is the, the index I'm gonna follow the, the, the presentation. And to put you in context, uh, there are multiple and um, very common spinal disease like, like scoliosis, for example, which need a vertebral fusion. This surgery consists in inserting screws into the vertebra, as you can see there in, in the image, in order to fuse two or more vertebra together and to stabilize uh, spinal segments. As you can imagine, this procedure is, is complex due to the high risk of uh, damaging the nervy neurovascular structures. And usually many of the screws are misplaced. So this is why surgeons uh, need to be guided through anatomical references using intraoperative imaging systems for navigation technology. But uh, there is also the possibility of using a robotic assistant. And this market has been growing very fast in the last years. And especially in spinal surgery, more precision is, is being demanded. So uh, in the market, and these ones are our main competitors, all of them use the optical tracking technology to compensate the, the patient movements. 
this is the breathing of, of the patient or the movements that the surgeon can make over the patient. This optical tracking technology uses uh, cameras, as you can see there, and markers or fiducials into the robot and the patient. So from cyber surgery, we can provide, or we have provided a different solution with a different technical approach and advantages. So this is our solution. We have developed our own mechanical tracking system, different from the competitors. This is an articulated and sensorized small arm that directly connects the, the main robot. In this, case, in this case, it's the, the white one you can see there in the image, a stable robotic arm. Uh, this uh, tracker connects this main robot to, directly to the patient. And uh, we have also developed our own uh, surgical planning software. With this software, the surgeon plans the trajectory of the screws into the CT images of the, of the patient and the robot places the guide for the instruments in that exact trajectory. So during the surgery, the tracking device recognizes the, the patient movements and updates in real time the selected trajectory. So we have patented these uh, two solutions, the, the tracking device and also the, the bone clamp, which uh, connects the tracking device and the, the patient. So uh, this solution uh, gives value and provides advantages for patients, surgeons, and for the hospitals, hospitals also. Uh, first, the surgery is, is safer thanks to the precision we offer, thanks also to the reduction of the use of x-rays and the fact that it allows a minimally invasive surgeries with a better and faster recovery of the, of the patient. Secondly, the surgeons can use this system in different spinal regions, like like thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and this technology can be used also in other medical applications for biopsies, for example. And finally, the use of the robot reduces also surgery times and costs, as well as patient hospitalization times, which implies in a cost reduction for the hospital itself. So we are currently testing the system as, as much as possible with uh, human cadavers to see the surgeon's feedbacks, the precision we can achieve, and the future improvements. These are different images from our last test with cadavers. And on the left side, you can see the robot connected to the patient and the surgeon inserting uh, surgical instruments through the, the guiding tool. And to finish, this is our roadmap. Until the last year, we were developing and improving the, the assistant based on the surgeon's feedback. During this year, we have been improving the last details and, and progressing in, in the preclinical trials. Our target now is to, to prepare everything to start as soon as possible with uh, clinical trials in patient. And uh, this one will be in September of 2022. And this way we will uh, obtain the C mark and then the, the FDA to, to go out to the, to the market. So this is all, hope you enjoy it. And let me know if you have any questions. Excellent, thanks a lot for that, Anne. Um, and with that, we'll jump quickly over to um, Beta Robotics. Andrew. Okay. Okay, are you seeing the, the screen? Yes? Yes. Okay, but not the video, I don't know why. Maybe I have to, sorry. Okay. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. So I'm here to present the Beta Robots company, which is a, a company started up uh, uh, almost six years ago by three PhDs, uh, 
that came from IRI, which is a, a robotics institute in Barcelona. We are placed here in Europe, in the Mediterranean coast, uh, Catalonia, Spain. And after, during this uh, uh, five, six years, we work at, uh, in, in different uh, advanced robotic projects, which, uh, um, uh, which are uh, focused on, um, on um, moving some ideas to the to the reality okay so and the, the projects were of different uh, nature like uh, manipulation tail operation parallel robotics bin picking uh, mobile robotics autonomous navigation uh, 3d computer vision even teaching tactile tactile sensing so quite uh, sparse and different but uh, since the last two years, and after our experience uh, on, with uh, three important projects, we focused more on, on mobile robots. Okay? And after these uh, three projects we did with partners, uh, we, we identified it. We have a, a kind of product to that, that uh, is of, we think, of interest for the market. So we are uh, from now uh, uh, presenting this product, this uh, value proposition to the market. And uh, the proposition is the follows. So we, we target to uh, machinery manufacturers. So uh, companies that are uh, very competent on building electromechanical systems but they may have a barrier on the software side, especially for uh, mobile robots. Okay, so we, we uh, partner with these uh, companies. So they, they design and build their own robot uh, adapted to the, the needs of their customers. And we put uh, all the software stack on that robot, okay? And this is the our proposal is so we work with the, with our partners uh, during the first three projects, designing designing the the robot, uh, building and uh, assembling the robot, uh, installing and testing the software, and even uh, the deployment to the end customer uh, facilities. So we are uh, accompanying our partners to all these steps. Okay. And, and with the aim that in mid term, so uh, after the, so from the fourth project and, and on, we think that the partners can be uh, uh, enough autonomous to, to build an assembly and install the software and go to the end customer facility by their own. Okay, so the idea is you build your robot uh, adapted to the, your customer needs. And we put absolutely all the software from the low level motion and controller, con kinematics controller up to uh, fleet management uh, uh, in, and even business intelligence or uh, mo metrics uh, analytics. Okay, so this is the idea and uh, uh, just uh, uh, an overview of our software. It's separated in, in, in two parts. One runs on board and the other one runs on a server. And uh, the onboard part is mainly runs obviously the autonomous navigation part, but also the motion control, the monitoring of the safety, the monitoring of the energy, communications and logging of the data. And on board, we have also a, a PLC uh, safe, uh, safety PLC, okay? And in the server side, we have all, all this uh, fleet management, mission management and monitoring, and also interfaces with IT systems and also with uh, uh, automate, uh, automation devices like PLCs installed on the plant. Okay, so this, and the benefits uh, we provide by, uh, we provide to our partners so is the our partners have 
a mobile robot partner, okay? That, and then they don't need to, to have an expertise on software. So because uh, they get all the software they need and they reduce drastically the time to market, okay? And let me show you some uh, success cases. So here a differential vehicle which uh, transfers loads in, uh, automatically with conveyors, okay, up to one ton and half, okay, this is one instance. Always the navigation we implement is a, is a map-based navigation, so it's, uh, it's also ca called natural navigation, so the roads do not follow uh, fixed lines, okay. Another Another success case is, is this one. Maybe in, in some minutes, Juanjo will uh, talk more about, about it. But any, anyway, I, I, I do a, a spoiler. It's an omnidirectional platform, uh, very cool mo motion and very interesting motion. And um, so uh, again, all the, the software is, is uh, our product. Okay, and also using two of these movie, movies, two of these robots, another uh, engineering company, IDASA, uh, built this, this tandem, which is also a, an omnidirectional tandem, but that can uh, carry loads up to uh, three tones. Okay, so these, are, uh, these three are cases of partners that trusted us, and so we we uh, achieved uh, to, to uh, bring to the market a, a robot fully equipped with a, a full software stack in a short uh, delay, let's say. So uh, do not hesitate to, to contact us uh, through a website. You can find a, a contact form there. Okay, so if you have some question, uh, we will be happy to to, uh, to answer. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks a lot for that, Andrew. Uh, I note that uh, Heiner have joined us now from Ferromatics. If you want to uh, start your presentation. Excellent. You are muted. Uh, of course, there we go. Uh, sorry for that. So thank you very much for that. So let me just go to my screen and uh, you should be seeing this now. Can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes. Good. Okay, let me just take away this. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. My name is uh, Heiner Lea and I'm the CEO of Paramatics. Uh, we develop smart uh, robotic solutions for the livestock industry. We're founded five years ago. Uh, we're a startup until two months ago, but we're acquired uh, now by Echo, uh, which is a large US American equipment manufacturer. We are what's called a precision livestock farming company. So we use modern sensing and robotic technologies uh, in order to improve welfare of the animals and also achieve higher productivity of the farms. We are dedicated right now to chickens in particular to broiler chickens. So the ones that give you meat because we globally raise about 60 billion of these animals every year, 3 billion of which never make it through the process because they fall ill and die. They gobble up 250 million tons of feed every year, 3 million of which we could easily save if we had better digestion management. And some of them, they suffer bruises and scratches and they're not apt for human consumption. So we could save 1.6 billion animals from going to waste like this if we had more control over the living conditions of the animals in the farm. And that is precisely the purpose of our first product, the, the Chicken Boy which is the first ceiling suspended robot that monitors the animals, the farm, the equipment on the farm 24 hours a day. So we zigzag through that animal house, as you can see here a little bit, and uh, several times a day in order to use, well, using sensors, artificial intelligence and big data to alert farmers to any kind of problems that the chickens might have. And monitor, we monitor a lot of things. So at every point in the farm, we monitor that the 
thermal environment is uh, the best for the chickens, that the quality of the air is good, that they have the right light and right uh, noise levels, that they're well distributed. We use artificial intelligence to find mortality trends, to identify defective drinkers, uh, and we find about 15,000 little excrement every day. And from classifying those, we can help farmers identify intestinal problems up to three days earlier, which makes all the difference. And finally, we also move the chickens now. If uh, they're clocked in one kind of place and they get a lot of scratches and bruises, so we can help them move. And that also incites them to you know, go walking a bit, a bit of chicken jogging, and helps with their leg health. So it's very beneficial for them. We, of course, collect you know, a ton of data, as you can imagine. Uh, we supply that data then through cloud platform, but also directly on the mobile phone in the form of uh, alerts and in the form of reports, like this one that we generate every morning, which is kind of a radiography of what's going on right now in that chat. And just to show you two examples, this is here outbreaks of ammonia that you can see in the top. It's kind of a picture of the barn, like a bird would fly over it. And uh, ammonia is a, is a gas that's really bad for the respiratory health of the chickens and of the farm workers. Uh, but it's also a pretty potent greenhouse gas. So, you know, avoiding ammonia is a good thing for, for everyone. And we not only measure how much ammonia there is in the barn, but we also show the farmer exactly where that uh, ammonia is generated. So he can go directly to those places and deal with the ammonia with, uh, for which there are several ways to, to deal with. Here's a second example where we monitor excrements, the little gray, uh, the, the gray area, this rectangular gray area is again the barn. You can see here on the first uh, image on day 14, there was nothing to be seen. On day 15, you can see already some purple spots. These are spots where we've observed bad digestion, so bad excrements. And we alert the farmer on this day he decided not to do anything about this, and then this is how it played out. So once you get this into your farm, it explodes exponentially. And therefore, you, the earlier you can catch this, the better you can deal with it, and the more that uh, you can avoid you know, uh, your, your birds getting ill from an intestinal virus or whatever it is, bacteria. And that's the result. So here you see what is called feed conversion ratio. So that's kind of how much feed does the farmer need per one kilogram of, uh, of chicken meat? And you can see this big drop, and that is before uh, the chicken boy and with the chicken boy. So a huge difference, saving about 100 grams of feed per kilogram of chicken. And you can express that in a lot of ways. You can say that he saved about 9,000 euros per flock, but you can also say that he saved about 2,600 kilograms of CO2 equivalents just because he does not use as much feed as uh, he used before. And this is equivalent to an annual 120,000 uh, kilometers driving a car, for example. So in the end, with this robotic technology, we're helping the farmers improve animal welfare, the farm productivity, but also to make his farm you know, more sustainable environmentally. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, uh, Heiner. Very interesting solution. Um, and if there's any one of our attendees who are interested in farm robots, obviously we did a webinar in particular on that uh, space um, in the summer, which is available on our YouTube channel. Anyway, with that, uh, we hand over to Ricardo at uh, Construct. Okay, hello. Let me share my screen. Here, I think that somebody has to. Uh -huh. Heiner, can you stop sharing your screen, perhaps? Excellent, thank you. Okay. Sorry. There it goes. And Perfect. Okay, then. Yeah, so our company is called The Construct. And what we do in this company is <laughs> to build, to generate robotics developers. Uh, what does it mean? It means that we are teaching people how to program robots. We are not specifically teaching how to build robots, but how to 
take the most of the robots that already exist or you will build. So by using software, how to build software for robots. And our method is very different from current methods or available methods, usual methods for teaching online. Is uh, the typical ones are based on video, so you watch a video and you can see the lessons and so on. But in our case, it's not like this. It is based on using robot simulations by which the students, they can practice. So what they are learning are uh, in a practice-based environment in which for every step of the lesson, they have to do something in the simulated robot. And uh, for that purpose, we have built our own learning platform, which is, uh, you can see here for a specific course. In this case, we are teaching the basics of Linux for robotics. And we define that as a screen. This is on the, on the web browser of the student. So the student visits our platform and then and he will see this screen divided on the left with the lesson, step-by-step -step lesson with descriptions and commands and examples and so on. Then on the middle, you have the IDE for writing the programs. At the bottom, we have the terminals, Linux terminals, where the student can compile the programs, check the topics, uh, and do as a normal Linux and ROS environment installed in your own computer. And then on the other side, on the final, on the right side, we have the simulation of the robot which depends on the lesson that you are learning. So everything is integrated. So the student can at any time see the result of his, uh, his, uh, his learning. And the good point in our platform is that everything is running from the web browser of the student. So the student doesn't have to install anything on the computer. It doesn't have to have a specific operating system and so on. Then recently we have added, we have jumped from the simulation realm also into the real robot realm. And for that, we have built this uh, warehouse remote real robot lab where we have a mobile base that you can see here at the bottom of the, of the image and also a uh, um, cool bot. A uh, robotic arm, which is on the side on, on the, at the back of the of this room that you can see. Then with this, the students, what they can do is to connect remotely, not only to the simulations, but also to the real robots that we have here. We have an agenda system for managing all this. And then the students then practice first on the simulations and then apply into the real robots here remotely. So we can close the, the whole experience. We apply this and we use this platform to teach uh, students, individuals, people that want to learn more. Also, we have uh, several universities that use this system for teaching their students and um, also many enterprises, the companies that want their, to make their engineers be up to date on the latest robot programming subjects. And um, we are using this platform also to deliver one week workshops that are live at Barcelona here. So in case that you are interested, you can contact me to bring your engineers here to Barcelona and have a one week full class where we are teaching everything about ROS and how to program robots with ROS, especially ROS too. And yeah, they will use the, this warehouse uh, robot. Um, warehouse lab, yeah. Then if you want to know more, then you can, if you want, attend our open class every Tuesday, which is open, is free for everyone, every Tuesday at afternoon, afternoon at 6 CT, or you can listen to our ROS Developers Podcast and attend our ROS Developers Day conference or visit our website, which is there. Any questions? I'm here very happy to answer. Excellent. Thanks a lot for that, Ricardo. Um, with that, we'll jump uh, straight over to steering machines and uh, Juanio. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my, my screen. Okay, I hope you, you see it well. All right. First of all, I want to thank you, TLA uh, Robotics, for uh, giving us the opportunity to share our project here. My name is Juanjo Canuto. I'm the CEO of, Steam, of uh, Steering Machines. 
and I'm going to present uh, our solution, Mobi. Mobi is a, a solution that is in the field of mobile robotics. And we have uh, developed um, an innovative uh, technology that allows us to have an omnidirectional robot, uh, but using conventional wheels. That means uh, omnidirectional, it's uh, the capacity to move uh, in any direction and at any time. So uh, it's a very important uh, skill for, our, for a robot or mobile robots in order to develop um, their tasks uh, in an easier way. So um, it's it's easier to, to interact with people, to, to pass through narrow spaces, to interact with machines, to align with the machines. It's a very important feature. And we achieve it with conventional wheels. So normally this, this uh, omnidirectional uh, movement, it's achieved with this kind of uh, wheels, that one's in, in the middle of the, on the, on the, of the slide, the mechanical wheels. And because of the, uh, the, their design, they have a lot of uh, disadvantages in front of uh, conventional wheels that we, we see in the, in the industry every, every day. No? So we achieve this omnidirectionality with this conventional wheel. So we have higher low capacities, uh, are less complex. So it's a more, uh, more economical uh, solution. Uh, they don't have uh, vibrations problems. They require less maintenance. And we also can move through irregular surfaces or uh, it's possible to, to go through uh, outdoor environments. So um, we have this, this innovation and we provide it as a modular product. Uh, so you can see in, the, in, in this slide on the right side, uh, you can see a circle uh, where we um, are selecting the, the flange. So the, the MOBI, it's the unit that it's under this flange, it's a standard flange. And on the left side, you can see that if we attach the application, okay, the application is that thing in, in the top to the flange, then we can have um, particular solutions uh, with the same uh, traction unit, but with uh, different uh, applications attached on it. No? So for example, in that case, also collaborating with, with Beta Robot, as Andreu uh, has said uh, before, we have been working with them in, in several projects. Uh, so uh, you have seen already uh, one's uh, movement, but um, for example, in that case, we can see Movi carrying uh, boxes, Movi carrying uh, uh, a chart. Uh, also, we are working um, in a solution that can that can uh, put the big roll paper rolls in the mat in the machine directly, directly. And also, as Andre also have told uh, before, uh, if you combine two or, or more Movis, okay, because uh, they can be attached uh, to the same structure you can uh, develop um, new solutions in order to, to carry high, higher loads, okay? Our biggest MOBI, it's up to 2,000 uh, kilograms of payload, but if you attach more, uh, two or more MOBIs, then you can, uh, um, you can carry more uh, payload. So also it's, it's, it's an uh, omnidirectional uh, robot, but also it's a, uh, Modular and customizable. Okay, we we provide the basic MOBI, which is the the the, the unit that the mechatronic unit, no, that has the battery, the motors, the drivers, all the all the elements needed in order to to have a, a traction unit. But also we offer uh, hardware packs uh, such as uh, sensors and other kind of of packs that you you will need in order to develop uh, mobile robotics and also uh, software parts that we offer with, with Mobi. These software parts are uh, third parties parts in, and uh, precisely uh, the beta robot software uh, that has uh, developed it. Okay. So uh, we have three Mobis nowadays, Mobi 2000, Mobi 1000 and Mobi 500. And the, the number is corresponding to the, to the payload capacity. And these are packs. We also offer the integrated safety pack. If you want to develop a mobile robot that work with uh, certified security system sensors in all the axes and uh, sensor scanners and all the other accessories that you may need, no? the battery charger, autonomous charging station, uh, teleoperation box. And, and also we offer the 3D CAD of a standard solution in order to provide them to the mobile develop uh, mobile robotics developers in order to to uh, to take that uh, CAD 3D CAD in order to develop their own solution and to not start from a zero. 
And also we offer the, the software packs provided by Better Robots, such as navigation, uh, docking, Rosapi solution, fleet management, uh, and other uh, software parts. And uh, just to finish, uh, I want to say that our robot, it's, it's uh, designed to be safe, to work safely, okay? So we provide all the SIG elements that can be integrated in MOBI in order to, to have the, the, all the axes controlled by a certified security sensors. So in order to achieve um, not just a research mobile robot, but uh, if you develop a, a new solution on the top of MOBI, you can integrate it in, in the industry uh, in order to work safely from the day one. Okay, so this is my email, uh, our uh, webmail uh, address. So if you want to contact us or if you have any question, we are very pleased to, to answer you. Thank you. Excellent, thanks for that, Juanio. What, um, with that, we'll uh, jump over to Macro Robotics. Hey, and yeah. is sharing my screen. Yeah, excellent. So, thank you. Um, so this is Kish. I'm uh, head of technology at Macro Robotics. So at Macro, we work with a mission to connect robots with humans through food. So this we do by enabling automation for food and beverage services. I'd like to start with a video that would explain a bit about our, ourselves. So as you can see, we are uh, uh, all about people, robots, and food. So we are a food tech robotics firm based out of Sevilla, Spain. And we have our office across uh, our R&D office in India. And then we also have a sales office in the United States. Um, we have uh, 14 plus employees spread across our office. And we have been backed by leading accelerators in Europe and the United States, as well as Singapore. Um, we have four products already in operations and we have been in place uh, in the market since 2013. Um, why we are in food tech robotics is because the demand for fast food is increasing. It's, uh, mo there's gonna be more than 9 million people in the world and uh, by in the next 10 years and everyone uh, needs to eat. So, and mostly this is happening in the high density cities where uh, the population is moving towards and the demand for fast food is uh, like uh, even more high. And this demand has caused uh, like open doors for new business potentials in the restaurant sector uh, through automation. Um, so that's called restaurant tech. And uh, not just because there's a demand, but there is actually problem in the hospitality sector that uh, that uh, includes dependency on labor. Uh, dependency on labor is so much that it affects the restaurant opening hours. And then uh, beyond certain opening hours, the restaurant operation becomes slow and uh, the real estate cost is on the rise. So the profit is being affected by unpredictable costs. Um, and this problem or the opportunity is in a market where the consumption is really high. For example, just in Spain, there's 14 million cups of coffee or 3.6 million hectoliters of beer consumed every year. And this only keeps rising. Um, we are speaking about newer business potentials, in, not in the existing market, but new markets that are opening up. Uh, that could be co-working spaces, dark kitchens, or new concepts of restaurants, hospitals, clinics, and uh, new transport methods that are being opening up with sharing economy. So we are uh, targeting the market that is yet to be disrupted with new ways of servicing. That's why we would like to introduce us our robotic solution into these new sectors where, because our robots are fast, efficient, autonomous, 
and it takes care of the quality of beverages served every single time it's being served through our artificial intelligence system. Um, we have been researching this for more than uh, five years now, and we have been in the market for eight years. So our uh, products are uh, modular. So every robot can be customized for the customers depending on their uh, food and beverage uh, requirement. And also we use vision-based AI for food monitoring, which monitors the quality of food, the, the way the food is being serviced. Um, so every, every parameter that's being monitored uh, is uh, going to ensure the quality. And also all our kiosks are network connected, uh, cloud connected, uh, and uh, it has the potential to be 5G connected as well. Um, the robots, uh, when it's being in place, it can provide value in many different ways. And uh, the top ones are that it increases the productivity by 100%. And also the uh, restaurant functioning hours can be uh, increased by trifold. And also uh, the profit on each product being sold can also be increased for the restaurant owners. Um, we have four products in the market. That is Kaime, which is a humanoid robotic kiosk. Cart, uh, which is a food, uh, food uh, cart uh, where the robot is automating the service. And also delivery robot and disinfection robot. The main advantage of our robots are that we are focusing on zero wait time for, us, for the food service. And everything is uh, touch free from humans. So it's sanitized all around. And also uh, running a business or running a food business with robots becomes stress-free. So this is our main value propositions. And uh, also with respect to financials, you could start renting our, uh, or any businesses could start renting our robots uh, monthly from about 500 euros. So even financially, it's a very affordable solution. Uh, our robots are very well proved with leading customers in the market. We have, uh, we are testing, we have, successfully piloted our robot with Nestle, Mouse and Miguel, Prio Energy and Waiki Beer. Also, we are working now with Telefonica and a few other customers. So uh, this year, there would be more uh, products in the market from Macro. What's next is all of our food carts that are being built now would be an autonomous cart in the future where this will be on the streets or in the events autonomously moving and serving your beverages. And one of our dream projects that we are uh, working on is a robotic kitchen where uh, all the functions from end to end would be automated through the robots. Uh, that could be potentially a dark kitchen where you, when you order uh, food from your home, that would potentially be cooked by a robot in a dark kitchen. So we are revoluting the world for good. Uh, thank you for your time. Excellent. Thanks for that, Keith. Um, and with that, we'll jump straight over to Alex at uh, Alias Robotics. You're on mute, Alex. Now I think it's okay. Yes, finally, okay, perfect. I think you can, I'm sharing the screen now. Okay, yes. uh, hi everyone and thanks TLA for letting us to introduce our company, I'll be fast. So, uh, Elias Robotics, Elias Robotics, we're going to change a little bit the subject. We've been talking 100% about robotics. Now we are going to mix and introduce some other technology which is our security. So, so now we are going to talk about robotics and the relation with cyber security. Here we have a very quick overview about what we did during these last years as important milestones, the launch of our product. Later on, I will have some details about it. The RIS, the Robot Immune System, our partnership with Telefonica, um, the laboratory we recently inaugurated in Munich a couple of months ago. That's why uh, we are located in the north of Spain, in the Basque Country, and we have our cybersecurity lab in, in Germany with, together with Telefonica. 
uh, you know, it's quite clear for all of us that we are living in the era of robots with a very big increase in the total amount of robots uh, bought every year. We work together with them and we want to introduce here the concept of different kinds of technology, for example, the cobots of the collaborative robots and also the robots that they are playing a critical role in, in, role in many operations with humans, such as surgery, for example. Today we have an example with, with, with a company. So so being said that, which is the value proposal of area robotics? First, we need to define the current situation regarding cybersecurity in robotics. Robots are vulnerable. And this is something we know. This is something uh, need, to be, need to be changed during um, the next years. It was very good to something that Juan Hofor and Steering Machine said that uh, I think it was the only mention to safety. He said that his robots are, are safe. We claim that besides being safe, they need to be secure. Safety is the way our robots are interacting with users, with humans. But another thing very important is security, is the way the environment around the robot, how they are influencing, how are they reacting to robots. And we are calling about cyber attacks, for example. Robots, they were not uh, designed to be cyber security, uh, cyber secure. The robots were, I mean, the first robots were installed a long time ago. This is not a new technology, robotics. The robots, as we know for sure now, there are many companies that we see today with very new technologies and advanced technology. But it's true that the same, that IT cybersecurity was very, I mean, it's, let's say, they have a good track of, of previous work done. All the cybersecurity, the industrial cybersecurity is a new field that need to also to, to fulfill some cybersecurity uh, measures. The consequences with some of our customers of an attack in, in, in a robotic system can be very big from, I mean, a lot of money uh, spent in, in just one minute uh, where their production lines are stopped the risk they have to have any accident and also there's a, a lack of, of, of reputational problem. To do so, this is the situation what Alia Robotics is offering a solution. It's a joint solution first with a diagnosis with where we check, where we define or we evaluate the cybersecurity level which is something, let's say, is not new. Many companies are doing it, even we are experts in robotics. And the second one is our antivirus, that is our, our main product, our key product that later on I will explain a little bit. As I said, our services from one side, that this is the diagnosis, where with a threat model, which is a theoretical study of the vulnerability level, the entry points of a possible cyber attack, we define uh, a report to our customers or where we evaluate which is the, the vulnerability or the possibility of being attacked in the in their robotic system. We have also some other, like the penetration testing, that is the same, but it's more an offensive process where we, where we hack our, our, our customers' uh, robotic systems and we exploit the possible vulnerabilities they have, and also the read teaming that is something similar, but with one very specific point to be attacked. Once we do the diagnosis, later on, we have to do the treatment. And this is something new, and this is our key product. That's why two years ago, we created the RIS, which is the robotic immune system, which is some less, for making it simple, it's a smart antivirus based on AE, artificial intelligence technology that prevents and detects possible attacks or threats uh, that affects our robots. And uh, the peculiarity of our product is besides some other solutions, but there are perimetral solutions to the, to, the, to the robotic systems. Our is directly installed in the endpoint, in the device itself, in the robot. Uh, sorry, what I say here, safety and security, this is what I mentioned before, that not only safe, our robots must be secure. This is the way we can see our product in the teach pendant of, of the robot, which is something very silly, very silly, I mean, that something can be very silly learned by any of our workers. And this is the way our, our product is, is implemented. These five different modules that were already in our R&D department. We're already developing some other modules. 
We have some firewall, which is the first defensive line for threat attacks. We have a hardening module, which is the innate uh, security level of its robot uh, platform or its robot brand. We have a login, which is a black box where we collect all the all the communications that uh, flows around the robotic system. And later on, we have some other two modules: the AI module, which is the the artificial intelligence module that according to the information our robot is receiving, they know that it might be a possible threat or not, and also our visualization, where we visualize all what's happening in the robotic system. This is a product that is totally agnostic regarding the robotic platform. We can work with any brand or robotic, uh, of, of robotics, from the big ones to, to the small ones, and any model. Any model can be, can be adapted to our product or uh, the other way. Uh, our model can be adapted to, to any kind of robot or model. Uh, market is responding quite well. This is something very new, but just to mention that uh, worldwide, the demand is increasing every year. Uh, need to be mentioned that the Asian market is the one who is demanding um, in, increasingly with a very big demand for, for this product. That means uh, that we want it or not from the European market or European industries. We also need to wake up a little bit and see that in all parts of the world, they are already working quite hard in trying to have their robots and robotic systems cyber secure. And that's all. If there's any question you would like to make, I will be pleased to answer you. Thanks for that, uh, Alex. So with that, um, we will jump over to uh, a few questions here. So I have some personal questions I'd really like to ask as well. But we have one there that's uh, specific to you, Alex, actually. So I'm not sure if that's much of a question, but was there any attack damage done through an attack in a robot environment? And is the main threat for unavailability of the manufacturing assets? If that makes sense to you? Yeah, 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 that's it. Uh, well, no, let me, I, I guess there's in, I mean, the, I'm trying to check the, the answer, but anyway, I will try to answer at least part of it. Yes, they are. Some of our, uh, I mean, we know, for example, there are some public attacks, for example, Colonial Pipeline, you can check it on internet. They have, there's a pipeline and oil and gas company they were attacked a couple of years ago. And I mean, it was a general attack, but they were, they were also attacked through, through their robots, through their robotic systems. I can tell you that I know some other situations where the robot or robotic system has been affected, have been attacked. For sure, nobody wants to make them public, mainly the end user. But I know some very OE, uh, big OEM companies around us in our in our local area where we live in the north of Spain, in the Basque country, where they were affected because the attacks can be done from external people, hackers, or it can be done even for internal people, workers that they are manipulating the robots every every day. And yeah, it can be affected so they can get to stop all, all the robots and what can be even worse. I mean, I, I, I never seen it yet. Yet, and I hope that I am not seeing it uh, never. But there they can be also safety problems that the robots can be manipulated and they can even harm human beings. So, this is something, <laughs> this is the main reason uh, Alias is working, so to avoid all these kind of accidents. I don't know, I think maybe there was some other questions, some other part of the question that I'm missing, I'm not sure. Uh, whether it was more about the availability, if the threat is more about the availability of the assets. Um, then perhaps, um, I don't know if that makes sense, or if they are misbehaving is probably the question. I guess it's both really. It can be both. The, I mean, through a misbehave, you can stop the production line in big OEMs. We're working with very big companies, companies related to factory of the future concept, where technologies such as 5G, they are implemented. We don't understand the 5G without the devices being interconnected. That means that uh, additional cybersecurity measures must be taken in their, in their robotics. It can be a misbehave. So they can, as I said before, they can produce an accident with workers, which is this yep. scenario. So sorry to say that it can, it can be, I mean, they can do everything, whatever they need. Now they are really vulnerable. 
robots in general. Fair enough. From my interviews with the robot users, they're one of their big fears is actually the software up, uh, updates that uh, people tend to update um, whenever they want. So part of that would probably be the uh, cybersecurity as well. If I may ask um, one question to, to Anne at Cyber Surgery. Um, so this might more be, a, be a, a statement rather than a question, but yeah. how do you see, I mean, that is uh, surgical robotics. First of all, we'd be very grateful to have Cyber Surgery, which is one of the first surgical robotics companies to present uh, to mm -hmm. TLA Robotics. But there must be so many um, additional regulations in uh, uh, surgical kind of robotics. Is that something that you can talk about perhaps uh, about the, the regulations for the robots yes. in, in the surgeries. Yeah, there is, I don't know exactly the, the name of or the number about, but there are many, there are many regulations that uh, specify you uh, the, the, sec the security part uh, of the robot that you have to implement uh, inside the surgery room. For yeah. example, uh, when we are tracking the movement, the patient, um, we cannot uh, track the, that movement when we have uh, the instruments inside the patient. Uh, and that's what one thing that this is uh, regulated by, by, a, by a law. And we are uh, trying to improve this thing to, to trying to, to make the tracking during the surgery and not to stop uh, until the, the instrument is inside the patient. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, and one question for Fibs as well. Do you provide lines for raw food? Is it an issue to get full automation in raw food? Uh, we do. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a, it's a vast topic, but uh, generally speaking, we do have, um, we do work within uh, food factories. We actually have lines of equipment that, that are washable. Like uh, conveyor systems and uh, and uh, automated storage. Um, so yes, we do uh, do do work in that uh, that type of environment, and um, and typically where places in, in in food production where there's a lot of throughput, there's need for buffering that type of, uh, of things. Yes. Okay, excellent. And then there's one very specific question that we'll finish off on. I think that's for Heiner, where the ammonium comes from. Um, yeah, so not, not, not really a robotics question, but I'm very happy <laughs> to answer it. So this is actually the urea. So the excretions of the chickens themselves, they contain uh, a nitrogen and that is by, digested by bacteria in the bedding material into ammonia. Okay, excellent. All right, guys, thanks a lot for that. I think we'll stop on that um, excellent point. Um, thanks everybody for presenting and for anyone who's interested in more uh, information, the, uh, um, the webinar will be available on our YouTube channel soon. And I guess most uh, companies, they had their